Happy Mercedes Sync. Welcome to a live video master class. Let's say it like that. And in this video, to be talking about the thing you saw in the title later. But before I start speaking about uh, the our, our famous work, I would like to thank my, myself at first to all the subscribers and then, of course, to all of those who are not subscribers on my channel because uh, there are more and thanks for watching my content thanks for all the people from the usa from spain they also like the content and so on and so on then i would like to thank myself to some uh, special people at first those are the channel members and to some some special people and those are five of them a special greeting Happy Mercedes Sing and greetings go to Michele, to Eugenio, to Mohammed, uh, and to two of them. Okay, sorry, I, I forgot now the names, but there, I, th I think I've managed to greet all of you now. And now, as Eugenio Cose once said that my channel is uh, uh, YouTube, uh, on YouTube, uh, the KE Academy. Well, now I will try to, to prove that. So enough, <laughs> enough of, in, of introduction. I made it too long. Now let's go to the topic. Our topic will be the warm up regulator. So, the warm-up regulator is the predecessor of this thing. You know this thing of the EHA. Well, where's the difference now? You know, when they say K-Jetronic and K-E-Jetronic, there is a huge, huge difference between those two terms at first there is the difference uh, in the working principle some things you see there on kjetronic uh, are not uh, what you see on ke jetronic and uh, the ratio between uh, the two pressures between the system pressure and the control pressure. Well, this thing, here it is, it's called the warm-up regulator or in German, der Warmlaut Regler. And it means the same, uh, what it means in English. 
the warm up regulator so what is regulating what what is being warmed up well there are some names like for example control pressure compensator or this or that well the most suitable term would be the control pressure regulator what is being controlled let's see now who controls what so i must go back to ke jetronic again so ke jetronic starts from 85 up to 95 and from 73 up to 84 we have k jetronic and k lambda or k a jetronic in uh, german or k u jetronic which refers to the united states it's k jetronic with lambda and now s we have almost uh, i not i identical how to say it uh, as we have uh, the control pressure set as you start your car and the value is almost but uh, almost the same between uh, the cold engine and uh, the warm engine here on k jetronic that's not the case well how can you know if this part is not good working well the common issue and the common symptoms are too rich mixture you have uh, for example replaced the injectors and maybe you messed up with the co screw but again the mixture too rich and maybe uh, the revs high well then that's a good indicator for you to check your work your regulator this is what happens actually on ke on k jetronic it happens that in most cases the nominal value for your system pressure is 5.4 or 5.6 bar and the control pressure is almost non-existent so the pressure difference between uh, the two is almost five bar and while on ke jetronic that pressure difference is 0.5 bar and 0.4 once uh, the engine is uh, at 80 degrees here it's whole five bar and now as you start the car this is the way your car has to operate the revs must go up to 1000 rpm and then the car has to raise those revs up to 1200 and with time it's measured for about four minutes in these four minutes 
the revs must start dropping and the control pressure must start raising from this pressure of 0.5 bar you must reach approximately the pressure of 3.8 bar 3.8 so this is one more difference between the k and k eject warning so the differential pressure on ke is 0.4 bar on k jetronic it's almost 2 bar approximately 1.8 bar is the differential pressure well if your were your regulator is behaving like that then everything's fine but if not well you have then the issue with the port so now it's a bit complicated so to speak but on the other hand the good news is that uh, the were is rebuildable the only downside is that it's not universal like the eha this one for example i got from m103 engine and it can be compatible both with m102 m 104 or M116 engines. So the working principle is basically the same. But what is not good is that once this guy goes bad, then you can just throw it away. This, now let's go back to the war the warm-up regulator is rebuildable in order to rebuild the regulator you must go to the site missing parts i'll drop the link in the description of uh, the video later once i'm done www.missingparts.de and there what is important you must look the repair kit for your Uh, regulator so here here you have that number and you search the regulator by the last three digits in this case it says here 015 that was the one and then you will see because on these the body the upper part of the body is universal literally for every and each of the of the regulators while the lower part is the one that is different it's not the same on Mercedes vehicles, on Volkswagen or Audi or other parts, BMW, for example, you have two parts here. Here on Mercedes, you have three. And on the Mercedes itself, they are not the same. 
they're not uh, the same because on my original regulator I don't have this vacuum line I have just one here and the part here down is not the same i'll talk something about that uh, in my future videos on how to disassemble and to reassemble uh, the work considering uh, the missing parts this is not a paid promotion i had to pay with my own money <clears throat> the uh, the repair kit and you will get bunch of stuff and for example what i get got i got these for example so it tells me that they're mainly oriented towards uh, the uh, vw group group so i did not get these fittings i got these these you can see on porsche on volkswagen mainly but never mind you simply find your model and there you then order the the kit well now let's see what what is actually different what is it what what do you get there you will get a bunch of stuff but let me show you actually how everything uh, works on this on this regulator so you see i was not lucky i broke up this nut here it is you remember from my publications and uh, now I broke up oops and uh, okay later if there are any comments i'm uh, going uh, to answer them so now let me show you i had to buy another war it was game over then and this is the bimetallic spring and this is the heating pot so once the current of 12 volts starts flowing here this spring starts moving upwards so let me show you how it uh, actually looks like here what a, what do we need here more here look we have here two springs And we have a hat. I removed the old crease because there 
I just want to show everything this uh, to you how it looks like not just on pictures everything you find on internet is going to be on pictures here here inside we have this part you see this tiny part and now situated here excuse me here it has to wow the rest upwards let me show you i must get uh, remove uh, the heating body and so this one goes here 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 <laughs> you will have to remove this four screws in order to come to the parts that you have to replace and so let's take this one and this one and they go inside the spin I'm sorry there is no way I can show you here and s this by metallic thing this plate starts moving upwards it starts pushing a little plate so inside let me show you here inside when you remove this four flathead screw screws you have this bigger one this thicker plate and you have this one Let me just and now the goal of this. Let me show you this by metallic plate. Increase the and yes, this part here starts going going in. It practically pushes the plate upwards and it restricts. It restricts fuel flow from here to here and the how should we say it? and the control pressure starts uh, rising and 
the and the mixture becomes leaner that's parts here i show you so let me show you what else you're going to get there Here. This is what you're going to to get. So this is the circlip that goes here. This is the like a holder for this part, for the heating element. Okay, then these four screws, which are these, once you remove, unscrew, my bad, once you unscrew them, then let me show you then you can remove this plate and this one inside then you remove this one and as you do then there is here one o-ring you will get this rubber which was brittle on my car it's like this right here you put it but it was rock hard aha uh -huh. and here now this thing look now this thing here it has to be longer I broke it when I wanted to <clears throat> To unscrew it there you have this normal washer that goes here you have one like this that goes here and then you screw in everything is for the heating element here you get that one which is for so now the conclusion you must do this and that's something what you must do with a good pressure gauge the professional one there you there is no e improvisation there monitor the what's important the important 
thing is actually the pressure difference. If you manage to achieve that, what I told you you have to achieve, then that's it. So again, say this is the vacuum, here is the vacuum, this is the vent, and here down, for example, on this one, there is one uh, one spring preloaded. I'm not going to, uh, to split these two. For that, you must have a blade. And then with a hammer, easy bit by bit, and to split these two. Here, this is the rest of my diaphragm which lies here down so control pressure regulator well What's going to be a bit difficult for you is going to be to align this that little bit. This one, this one, and this little tiny thing here. Everything, everything else is not going to be some hard task, so believe me. That's it. Trust me. And uh, I, I will show you that in my future videos. How is this disassembled, reassembled, and For example, yes, in order to see if your heating element is fine, you will see this, something like this. For this one, for this work, which has to be 068, you have a value of 18 ohms. So you can measure that value. And I'm trying to see here if there is someone who was, who had comments. <laughs> here. So we're going to choose resistance. You put your alligator clips and there, no matter the polarity. Here, it says approximately 20, 20 ohms and the nominal value should be 18 so i believe it's not quite a, quite a difference only maybe the car is going to, to uh, reach uh, the warmed up uh, phase a bit slower and that that's it concerning uh, the warm-up regula regulator. For example, you may have a bit headaches with this circlip that has to be here, like a holder 
for the heating body. You may add some penetrants and if you don't uh, want uh, to scratch as I did, you can take some plastic uh, part or you can take simply the screwdriver and that and cover it in duct tape and then with a hammer bit by bit because you will have to remove this one in order to remove the element so the lower part of this regulator is uh, predicted only as I could see for the wide open throttle and everything else what has to be done is here it's here so again as i tried to simulate to you what is done how then simply this guy here pushes here and it restricts the fuel flow and then you have a linear mixture. Check again, as I said, if you start your car, your RPM raise up to 1200 and in approximately five minutes, four minutes actually, then the, the RPM start uh, decreasing on idle and uh, the pressure difference uh, starts uh, to decrease as well while the control pressure is raising then it's everything okay with your pressure regulator commonly said again 5.6 bar system pressure 3.8 bar control pressure and that is your healthy healthy k jetronic with a good functioning warm-up regulator or the control pressure regulator And one more thing, yes. I, also, I almost forgot about it. You see, this thing, don't touch it. Do not touch it. This thing is not predicted to be readjusted or if you do that but don't simply do not do that you have absolutely no reason for readjusting it if you have here I will tell you and you want to get it back then the distance from top up to this part down has to be 3.2 mils there one one more data for you if you are you wanted to readjust something then you are not satisfied this is how you're going to get to everything back but you will have to disassemble the whole work and then if you want to tap it here the wedge or to get it back but really really I wouldn't recommend it to you
and that's almost it about the control pressure regulator so now if you have any questions Let me see. Let's greet people. It's a uh, oh, it's a. Uh, I have no idea who the man, this man is. Bye, happy Mercedes to you, my bro. Duzenli, hello to you. Happy Mercedes. -ing. Salut Jean. Greetings to you. <laughs> I will have to translate this. I don't speak French. Hello to Eugenio. Enterprise <laughs> Thanks, Zen Jamin. <laughs> you can marry my sister. Thanks, if you allow that, and if she is for the marriage. And let's see now what Turbo Enterprise says. What do you think about very hard cold start with my Audi? When I check the spread not starting, they are not squirting gasoline for the first 20 seconds. When, where is the fuel pumping? KE just running. Very hard cold start. A very hard cold start can refer to cold start valve. <sighs> well, this is a bit complex question. Where the fuel pressure is going? Well, that's something you will have to measure with the pressure gauge. You have to measure at first the system pressure to see if you have some starting point. How you, how the car behaves in the, about the state of the fuel pump, the fuel pressure regulator. And then, then you measure the control pressure and there you must have the ideal pressure difference on audi i think it has to be 6.5 then you will have to get the control pressure of 6.1 if the pressure are almost identical then then you won't be able to start your car. If you cannot start the car, then remove the fuel pump relay, bridge the fuel pump, make it running constantly, turn the ignition on, and then uh, you measure at first the system pressure and afterwards the control pressure. And there you can see if 
if uh, the mixture is too lean, go and then clockwise if it is too lean. You must remove this protection screw, take Allen 2 mils screw and you can go, for example, at first you can go for quarter of a turn. Let's say it like that, clockwise. If the mixture is too rich, then go counterclockwise. And you must again put the EHA on. You must measure your pressures again. And at a certain point, the car must start. Yes, that's true. After you stall the engine, the engine has to maintain about three bars for almost half an hour. Not almost, at least, at least half an hour. If it falls, then check the, the first thing you have to check is the fuel accumulator. If the fuel accumulator is good, then let me show you. I have it. This thing. This is called the check valve. This is on your fuel pump. So as the pump builds pressure, this valve prevents the fuel from coming back. It sends it towards and starts building pressure. So you will have to then test the pump, of course, the fuel accumulator. That's what I can say. Well. So, any other questions? I'll do this live video for some while. <laughs> you cannot believe it. I managed to learn how to do a live video. <laughs> Everything was something like upside down. Something was not as it is supposed to be. But I managed somehow to do this. Thanks, Zen. Thank you for your compliment. Here is Hansel. My W24 M102 starts super easy when cold, but when driving and restarting, it takes francs to start. What could it be? Have you replaced the fuel, uh, the fuel accumulator? There, my question to you. If you haven't replaced the fuel accumulator, because all of these cars with either K or K Egetronic, 
they are old and few, but let's say it's few, 90% of them have a mileage less than uh, 50,000 kilometers. So all of them are above 100 plus kilometer, 100 kilometers, miles, it's not important. Well, and in this period, in this phase, then the parts that uh, break are the, the injectors, the accumulator, the fuel pressure regulator has to be checked, the potentiometer, the lambda probe, that's everything you must check. Fuel pump, accumulator and vacuum hoses are replaced. Uh, <laughs> test uh, test uh, the the residual pressure. I think I was thinking to take injectors out and clean them with lacquer there no don't do that i was speaking about that look i don't have here somewhere my any injector concerning uh, the this mechanical injectors they cannot be repaired so everything what people do they just flush them, <laughs> reverse flush. <laughs> that's nonsense. Let me tell you straight away. I'm going to tell you that's a big nonsense. You won't achieve much. Actually, you won't achieve anything because the thing that goes bad is not uh, the... Uh, the the injector and uh, because uh, the fact that uh, they are uh, dirty the thing that that goes bad is their seals inside of each injector you have its body you have the filter but that's seventh filtration and uh, that's absolutely unimportant <laughs> uh, you had the six of them before and what you have then is a valve seat that valve seat with times time uh, wears out and then then uh, the injector cannot seal seal back get seal that uh, uh, that spring and uh, the needle that goes like this. And as no tightness uh, can be made, no pressure, then they start dripping and dripping. Currently having a bad pattern back and forth. So the only solution is the replacement. I doubt that it is uh, possible to achieve any any results in uh, in cleaning uh, the injectors, and they are cheap. And do, don't bother yourselves doing that. Alexander Melicher, 
Hiller, you're awesome. Thanks, man. Yes, Council. This is this is a good one good video. Look. I'm way, 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 way less popular than Kent. I don't like to provoke anyone or uh, saying anything against someone to gain popularity, but I'm going to be now like Scotty Kilmer, telling you the truth. If you have watched that video, where he shows, I mean the Kent, his gauge, where he reverse flushes uh, uh, the, the injectors. I don't know if you remembered one, one sentence he said. He said, maybe you recover three out of six or four out of eight. These are his words, not mine. And there. So, what does it mean? 